Hello everyone and welcome back to another Let's Create A and this time it's an Agatha All Along inspired Witch's Road page. Ah ha 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 ha, yes. Ah, oh, best thing I've seen for a long time that show. I binged watched the whole thing and best thing Marvel's put out for a long time in my opinion. I just love everything about it. The song, the song, it's stuck in my head for the rest of eternity now. I love it. Ugh. So yes, I was so inspired by the entire show and the Witch's Road and everything. Especially the tarot trial. I don't want to spoil too much, but the tarot trial and Lilia. Oh my god! Ugh. Love it. <laughs> so... This is how I went about trying to make the trap door in the basement that leads to the witch's road. Now, I, once again, completely spontaneous. I didn't really have a plan. All I knew is that I wanted to include the trap door and the spiral stone staircase going in and then somehow include the lyrics to the song as well. And then also try and get the tower card upright in there somehow. If you watched my uh, Book of Shadows tour, you'll know that the tower is one of my favourite cards. So the fact that that had such an important role in that particular episode. Ugh, love it. So... <laughs> This is the trapdoor image. You can see that on the left, right, left, right, right, right side of the screen. You can see my reference image. That's kind of all I had to go off was that like bird's eye view of the trapdoor with teen in it. Because I liked it when they had the pentacle symbol on it. So I wanted that as well. So I'm just making the shape at the moment. I had a big piece of ribbon, that was my first idea which I then scrapped. My first idea was to have a, a long piece of ribbon to represent the road and have all of the lyrics to the song written all along the ribbon so that when you open the trap door you can pull out the ribbon to be the entire song. which. It, in all fairness that is an epic idea but I realised very fast that the ribbon would be f just yeah there's me sort of planning it now look I realised really quickly that there ain't no way I can fit that in the book without it being just too bulky like it was a cool idea but I was like I've got to think flat <laughs> I've got to think flat because like my book's nowhere near done and it's already overflowing so flat <laughs> so I very soon scrapped that idea with the ribbon it was a good idea though so yes I'm making the shape and I've used tracing paper because I needed to see what I was working with I needed something see-through so Here's my trusty silver pen yet again. Every single video you're going to see this pen. It's just, it's a fact now. It's, it's law. It's my law that you will always get the silver pen. <laughs> so I traced out the shape of the trapdoor with the silver pen. With the intention of putting the trapdoor in this silver shape. But again, this idea was scrapped and you'll find out later on why this was scrapped. I actually swapped it for gold. But it, it, was, a good, uh, it was a good thing to trace though, it helped me to create the trapdoor so it's like, it's not a total waste, it was a good guideline for me to use. But yeah, I can't get over that episode. That episode. Everybody knows what I mean when I say that episode. Such a good episode. Love it so much. 
my angry claw hand hands are coming out. Yeah, it was very fiddly. I can't think of another word for it other than fiddly. It was a very fiddly process. <laughs> it like it was it was all a good idea, and I had loads of fun making it. It's just it was so fiddly. Um, with my shaky hands and everything, I'm not sure how I pulled this off to be honest, but I did. So I got tracing paper and I traced the outline. I started by tracing the wrong line. I was supposed to trace the the middle one, the inside. So whoops. But I soon realise and I start doing the inside. And like I said, this was all spontaneous. I wasn't really... I wasn't sure what I was doing. I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know how to achieve what I wanted. And somehow it all just came together and worked really, really well, by the way. I'm so impressed with myself. <laughs> I won't lie, I'm well proud of this page. So yeah, now I'm cutting out, cutting out the shape. And the trap door is going to go onto the tracing paper. And you'll see why in a bit when I get down to it. So I've got my piece of paper now. I'm just tidying it up a bit, getting rid of all that pencil. I feel sorry for that ribbon up there at the top had so much potential. I'll use it for something else I'm sure. So yeah, making sure it fits and we're all good. Good to go, get my reference image back up, see what I'm dealing with. Thinking to myself, how am I going to make this? How am I going to even remotely do this? So now I'm thinking about, it's a trap door, it opens with two doors. So this piece of paper needs to be split in half. So I'm just making some guidelines where I'm going to eventually cut it in half. Looks like I did that wrong. And try to do it again, do I? No? Is it fine? Is it good? I can't remember what I did. Yeah, it looks good to me. <laughs> oh, I don't half take my time. This is sped up. Again, sped up. I then realised one very important detail that I'd missed, which is how is the trap door going to open if there's no, like, hinges or flaps? I was like, whoops, I've completely forgotten that you need some sort of like additional piece in order to flip the door open. So I got this random piece of paper out. I think this piece of paper made an appearance in my last video, actually. It's, it's the poor bit of paper that keeps showing up that I'm like, I'm going to use it, and then I just don't. See, I'm like trying to think of a way to like make basically just a flap so I can open, open it. But I think I scrap, yeah, I scrap this idea. In the end, I don't need one. I end up not needing one at all. I think I just give up on the whole idea of that. Because I can't get it to fit and it looks really weird. Just doesn't work. I shouldn't have kept this in. I should have just <laughs> I should have just cut this bit. I didn't I forgot that this bit was even here. 
What can I say while I'm awkwardly trying to figure this out? Um, hmm, what's been going on with me lately? Uh, still growing in subscribers, that's amazing. Like, I keep thinking it's gonna stop and it doesn't. It just keeps crawling, like, slowly up and up. So, again, I've got to say thank you. I just gotta say thank you. I'm just so surprised. Every time I get a new subscriber, I'm just like, what? So thank you very much for that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is it. This is the best bit. <laughs> so I have these sticks. Don't ask me how. I just do. I think it was my granddad who gave me a whole bunch of these random sticks. They look like lollipop sticks. Um, popsicle sticks. Ice, ice lolly sticks. He just had a whole like bunch of them and like years ago just went do you want these for something and I lied and I said yeah sure I'll take them and never saw them again until this time right here because I was like hang on a minute I can make a real wooden trapdoor using these sticks I'm a genius is what I learned <laughs> I just took these these random sticks and cut them to size and stuck them on the tracing paper to create a wooden trapdoor effect. There you go, look at that! Just kept sticking and I didn't even use, I just used my like uh, tape glue thingy as well, I didn't even need to go any, didn't even need any special glue, just taped it on. Because they're like really thin. And they cut really easily as well. So I didn't have to use any special tools or anything. It was very fiddly though. It was a fiddly process. Certainly took a lot of time. But it was well worth it. I can't believe I actually have a wooden door that opens. I'm talking as if I've made the best thing ever, but I mean, you got to admit that's kind of genius. <laughs> yeah, it was very fiddly with all the glue and sticky sticky and trying to make sure it's all cut to shape and things like on a diagonal. It was a bit awkward to cut them in that shape, but they work so well. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it! Have you ever seen anything so beautiful in your life? <laughs> yeah, look, finally, look, it's just a trap door. It is literally a trap door. Made of wood. I don't know why I keep repeating myself. It's like I'm trying to persuade you all that it's real wood. Trimming off a couple of the edges, just trying to get it as neat as I can. Avoiding splinters at all costs. And it's so lightweight and so thin because it's on tracing paper. So it's just perfect. And yeah, once I had that, I was, I was very, very, very inspired. I was very proud of that. So now I'm thinking about splitting it in half. Because the two doors... There are two doors with two handles. And they open outwards, so that was my next task. To try and get that to be a thing. So there you go, I cut it in half. And now we have two doors. And here's me demonstrating the door's opening. Ah, so cool! <laughs> My thumb's up right there. 
And then that's when I realised it was so lightweight and flimsy and bendy that I didn't need to have anything special to open them. I just had to stick the very edge of the doors down and then they just open really well. Got my reference image out again. And I think I go and do the handles next. Yeah, I draw on their little handles. I wish that I had like real like miniature brass handles or something. That would be so cool, but I think it'd be too thick and bulky for it. I wonder if there is such a thing out there like real miniature brass handles like from a doll's house or something. That'd be so cool. I might search the internet and look for some and see if I have any. Uh, but for now, I used my trusty gold metallic pen to draw the handles on the doors. And with each step, it's looking more and more exactly how I wanted it in my head. They're a little bit too flat for my liking, so I come in with a black pen and I just outline it all just to make it pop a bit more. Which version of the song do you like best? That's my question for everybody in the comments. Put down in the comments which version of the song you like best. I think my favourite is the sacred chant where they discover this trapdoor. For sure, I love that one. The vocals on those people, come on now. The harmonies, ah, oh, so good. So I used the silver pen to just put a tiny bit of highlight because I'm trying to make it as 3D as I can. It's not the greatest but it's it does the job. Doesn't translate very well on camera but um, as you know from my previous videos they're very shiny. And I love shiny. So it's shiny gold with a bit of silver. So now I'm beginning to start thinking about this pentacle. And, you know, I should have done what a normal person would have done and just got something circular, like a mug or a glass, and drawn around that. But no, no, I went freehand. Yeah. I was just, I was right in there. Straight in there. Barely even flinched. I just went, yeah, I'm just going to freehand a perfect circle. <laughs> Which I'm kind of proud of, actually. To say it's freehand, it's, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> I don't think I make a single mistake. Just instant circle. And then, of course, I use the silver pen to do it. And I just very carefully, it's a little bit fiddly because of all the gaps between the wooden bits. But slowly, but surely, I trace it all with the silver. And I end up with a pentacle. Which there's nothing more witchy than a pentacle. I am definitely going to try and look up miniature brass handles. <laughs> now that I've said that, I'm like, I'm definitely going to try and see if there's such a thing. Because that would be so awesome. So yes, I'm filling in the star part of the pentacle. Again, free-handing. Just free-handing the whole lot. 
<laughs> it's like I've got no time for for messing about. I'm just gonna go right in there. Just freehand all of it. I know I say this a lot and you'll probably get fed up of hearing me say it, but I wasn't feeling well again that day. I say that day, it was yesterday. Yesterday I did this and filmed it and then today I'm doing the voiceover for it. And yeah, I wasn't feeling all that good. I was very shaky and I was a little bit unhappy sat in my chair on my desk. Sometimes my body just can't hold itself up for very long, so I was getting increasingly annoyed by the pain level I was in, but I was so... I was just so full of excitement and enthusiasm making this thing that there was no way I was going to stop. <laughs> this, was a, this was an all-in-one sitting kind of deal. <laughs> Nearly done with the star. <laughs> I like how messy my table is. It's just so messy. Not normally that messy. There we go. Looking good. <laughs> My Spotify was on as well. Yeah, here we go, here we go. Another really good part. So I couldn't find, like, the actual one from the show. And the quality was too rubbish as well. So I decided to just Google Stone Staircase Bird's Eye View. And this was practically the first image that showed up and it's perfect so I just printed it out and use this to go behind the trap doors to give the illusion of going down this staircase to the witch's road and I'm just lining it up and then I think I'll probably, yep, there you go, demonstrate. Demonstrate how it will open up. And there's the staircase, it's so cool! <laughs> it's so cool. This is where I give up on the silver. I'm like, no, because I don't like it now with the silver around it. Because it kind of just looks good on the black paper as is. I have a little moment where I'm like, but the silver though, but the silver. And then I just quickly decide, nah. <laughs> just plain, plain will do. So now it's time to secure it. With my sticky tape. This thing is a lifesaver. Like, I use this uh, roll-on tape, sticky tape, like, for everything now. Just literally everything. <laughs> Fiddly. Fiddly bits. And then there you go. Secure that. I kind of like how it blends into the black as well because it's kind of dark. And got a door and a door. And I'm just obsessed at this point with just like putting the doors on and then opening them. I'm just obsessed. I can't stop doing it. I'm just like, I just need to, I just need to put this over again so I can just see the doors open. <laughs> and now I'm going to attach the doors. At last. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm like, 
if I mess this up, I really mess this up. Game over. I only had about five or six sticks left, so I couldn't remake this door if I did anything wrong. So here we go, the first door is about to be placed. F bit fiddly. Very fiddly. But there you go. Door number one down. And then voila, it opens. Just like that. Perfect. And now that I'm happy with the first door, I'm like, yeah, let's get this second door down. I'll leave a tiny little gap between the two of them just so you can slightly see the background image. Not that it matters that much. And then double doors. Double doors! <laughs> and then I'm even more obsessed. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, doors! Opening doors! My little jazz hands look again. My enthusiastic jazz hands. Yeah, see, look, I'm going back. I don't even need to do it again, but I'm just like, double doors! <laughs> <laughs> I just can't stop opening the doors because I'm that impressed. I'm like, yeah. Right, so now that the trap door is pretty much done, I had this random tarot card. It's from Harmony Nice uh, Tarot Oracle deck. And it's a beautiful set of cards, like beautiful. The illustrations on it are so, so nice. But it's just unfortunately a deck that I just do not use. I just didn't vibe with it. I just, uh, I just put it down and didn't ever pick it up again. So I thought I may as well use, I may as well use it for something. And I thought the witch card in the deck was just the perfect card. The tower card does come in later, but I wanted this card to specifically say a very specific quote from our dear Lilia, which I'm not going to lie, I cried, I cried when she said the way she says it and just the whole, oh, I cried, I cried so much. It hit, it hit really hard. Ah, oh, best moment. And the quote, if you haven't already guessed, I loved being a witch. I loved being a witch. I'm gonna cry again. Ah, oh, I loved being a witch. And I kind of saw the road as a bit of a metaphor for just life in general. Or like, more specifically, a journey through disaster or trauma or just yeah it kind of felt like that sort of metaphor I was going for I kind of feel like my prize at the end of the witch's road would be accepting myself for who I am and that is a witch and just accepting everything about myself even though for the past 10 years I've had terrible illness it's like I feel like my trials would be conquering my fear of my chronic illness and then at the end of the road just realizing that I am me I am me and I am I am who I am, and I'm good. Just, yeah, full acceptance. Looking back on my life and hoping that I can say the words, I loved being a witch. 
yeah, that's my prize at the end of the road. Here I'm adding the sigil from the show because uh, that's what Lilia did. So I see it as her sigil. And it's a cool looking sigil. So it's just a little nod to the show itself. So yeah, just a good reference to the show to include on the page. I went a bit deep there for a second, I'm sorry. <laughs> So yeah, I swapped the idea for the silver into gold instead, and just one outline. Gold felt much more appropriate, it just felt like it matched the wood colour and the handles that are gold. And on the black paper it really stands out. Made it feel more special. And it really complements it, it just suddenly makes it really pop. Very slowly filling this in because it's sped up. <laughs> just trying so hard not to mess anything up at this point. There, look at that, that works so well. And now I'm just waiting for this card to dry because the glossy surface and the black pen didn't really like each other so I'm just waiting for that to dry before I do anything else with it. <laughs> My jazz hands are still going, I'm like, ah, oh, this is so good, I'm so happy. It's like, I can't wait for this to dry, hurry up, dry, so I can continue because I'm having so much fun right now. There you go, can't, can't resist opening a door. Having another look. <laughs> so yes, the next stage was cutting cutting out the door fully. I decided I don't want just a pure black background, but I do like the black. So I just kind of cut around the edges and just left a little bit extra. So it's a bit like a black and a gold border around it and it really completes it and puts it all puts it all together yeah there it is just keeps getting better <laughs> that side doesn't matter and then yet again opening the doors gotta show it off again ta-da and then Look at this! Perfect tarot card holder. Mm-hmm. I did not plan that. <laughs> I didn't plan it. But there you go. Perfect tarot card holder right there. Holds that card that card perfectly. Perfect. That's when I started thinking about the tower card. That's when I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> Hang on, just a second. If this can hold a card, I cannot not include the tower card. I have to. That's when my, my gears were going in my mind and I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> tower card. That's going to come in for sure. See, I'm just f trying to find a page that fits it because this book has got so many different pieces of paper in it that are not the same size or shape so I found this page and it worked pretty well it does stick out a tiny bit but only slightly so it doesn't bother me at all so yeah I'm just trying to picture and imagine what it'll be like when it's actually in the book and secured Trying to think about the backgrounds, any other details, how I'm going to include the lyrics, because that's a whole other thing that I wanted to include. Even thinking about the position of the card. And I'm just admiring it at this point. 
Just keep on admiring it. Right, now we move on to the lyrics, which I could say they're the main event as well. Didn't think, don't think that I didn't forget about the lyrics. So I, I, this is another really random find again. I just had this really random single piece of like, almost like cling film style. I don't even know what it is. It was just like a see-through really thin piece of I don't even know what the word is for it it was just like film you know when you get like a like you know when you get like a new phone or a iPad or something and there's that film that you peel off of things and it's like super satisfying it was literally like one of those and I had no idea whether it would work or not but I thought because it was see-through and it was like this weird a different fabricy, papery thing that I'd not tried before. I'll write all of the lyrics on here and see what happens. <laughs> like I said, spontaneous. So yeah, I've got the lyrics up on the on my iPad there because I didn't want to get the lyrics wrong. Even though I'd been singing it in my head and out loud like for days at that point I just wanted to make sure I didn't get anything wrong and yeah the song itself is so cool it's just so beautiful I love I love all of the lyrics I love the um like gather sisters fire earth and air and the 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 uh, maiden mother crone just all these really cool witchcraft references i love it and even though it's a song that was made for a show and it's fictional it just feels like such a real song it just feels like something real witches would definitely sing to like conjure up <laughs> conjure up a spell you know so there we go I've, I've wrote all of the lyrics on this film and I've added a key sticker on it because I suddenly thought this song is the key to opening the witch's road so if the film is going to be placed on top of the trapdoor, then it's like you're, you have to read the lyrics first and then open it and it's the key to the trapdoor. Did that make any sense? <laughs> there it is, the tower card and that's the original art from the show. That's the actual art, that's the card. So I printed that out on photo paper because I wanted it glossy and nice. And you might have missed them but I'll show them again later. Uh, on the inside of the trapdoors I added two other stickers. Uh, one of them is a timer because of the trial timer. And then another key because I just thought, you know, once you're in you need a key out, right? <laughs> Once you're in, you don't want to get locked in, you want the key to get out. So yeah, I just added a couple of stickers here and there. So yeah, that was my thought process. To unlock the gate, you need the key, which is the song. And then the tower card here fits in perfectly. And I just love that you can see the tower poking out, like the words at the bottom. And it holds it so well. So now I've got my bits and pieces. So I've kind of got more or less everything that I need to form the full page. I decide that I don't want these two cards to be loose. So 
so I want to stick them together somehow. So it's like when you turn the tower card around, you're met with the iconic quote. And then I had this washi tape, these blue petal washi tape, and I was like, hang on a minute. Blue, blue petals, blue leaves, like in the show. When they first go into the road, the whole road is scattered with blue leaves. Perfect! It's like I planned everything and I didn't, I swear. So yeah, I used this washi tape stickers to like just gently stick this down because I didn't want to glue it because I didn't want to destroy the card completely. It means I can remove it if I ever want to. So yeah, just on the corners I added these lovely blue petals. And then I think I got my gold and silver pens back out just to do a couple of flourishes on the back just to kind of make it, you know, a bit more decorative. Yep, there you go. Some gold at the bottom and then I think I underline the, the witch at the bottom with silver. Of course I do. Just want to emphasise the witch. And that's that for the cards. I just didn't want them falling out so that's why I thought I'd stick them together instead. So that's the cards, the trapdoors and the lyrics all done and dusted and now I'm thinking about the background. So I had this purple scrapbook paper, like a textured purple bit of paper, it's almost fabric like. And I thought that purple had to be the background colour. It had to be the background colour because Agatha is trying to get back her purple, isn't she? She's trying to get back that purple and yes, my favourite colour is purple too. And I associate purple with divination, with magic in general, intuition, just all that good stuff that I love so much. So, of course the background had to be purple. So I very loosely planned how big it needed to be and then I got to ripping my classic technique of just, just rip it. Because I just, I, I like the effect of ripped paper. Although this side really did not want to be ripped, it was not cooperating with me whatsoever. But there you go. And then I didn't like that corner and then I went whoop and whoops. Totally destroyed it. But then I went like that and went, hang on a minute. The other side is like this purple metallic colour and that looks so cool. So I was like, instead of that, I can have it like this. Like multicoloured and like the, the back is like super shiny and you know how I feel about shiny. <laughs> I can't get enough shiny. So yeah, here we go, it's time to stick this down. <laughs> I just love how Agatha wants her purple. Gotta get that purple. Every single witch wants that purple. So there we go, down it goes, looking good, and then the two extra pieces. I 
And I kind of did this as uh, loosely as possible. I tried not to be perfect. And there it is, in it goes. And again, it doesn't translate very well on camera, but super shiny. Super shiny. <laughs> Found a random part of a book or something. No idea where that came from. And now it was the moment, the moment I'd been waiting for this entire time. Attaching the trap door and securing it on the page. <laughs> My masterpiece. A bit fiddly again, but I managed. There you go. Perfect. Just really pressing it down, trying to secure it. And there we go, look how good that is. So nice. And then I had the task of putting the lyrics over the top. Now, I know that on camera this looks a bit like I'm ruining the trapdoor bit. But I swear, in real life, it doesn't look like this. It's much more see-through. You can see the trapdoor very clearly in real life. But just on camera, for some reason, it, it looks like I'm really obscuring the main event, which I promise I'm not. In real life, it looks great. Or else I would not have done this. <laughs> So yeah, I had a problem. I ran, I ran into a slight problem, which was the my faithful sticky tape roll-on thingy. It didn't work. It must be something about the the surface. It just did not stick. It just wouldn't roll on. Just nothing. It just wouldn't transfer onto it. So I was like, oh no. Right at the last hurdle, I'm met with a challenge. <laughs> My hands are like, no, why? No. Don't do this to me, no. I don't want to write it all again, please, no. So I thought maybe stick it on with the petals. But then I was like, no, that doesn't work because there's no room for that. Because it fills the whole page, so... I'm screwed, what am I going to do? So yeah, I had to take a, take a few minutes to try and think of a solution. Which I do in the form of another stick. <laughs> Don't ask me how this idea popped in my head, but yeah, I saw a random stick and I was like, hang on a minute. What if I stick the paper onto the stick and then stick the stick onto the book? Yeah, and it worked. It worked. <laughs> so I cut it to size. And it actually helps to like, like when you fold the piece of film up, it like helps in a way. Makes it more secure in a weird way. So it worked, it worked. So yeah, that's, this is me going, please, please work. And it does. I used so much force, I was just like, get on there, get on there. And it does. You can see me, I'm like, grrr. Like, stay down. And we're good, we're all good. So then I do the back side of the stick and glue that. A double layer, because I'm like, please. And then I secure it to the top of the page. 
and I do it wrong. It looks like I'm doing it right, but I do it wrong. I'm too far to the left. And you'll see in a second, I can't close the book without destroying it. And I'm like, uh-oh. That's not gonna work, is it? So I'm like, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to peel it back off. So thanks to my long nails, I'm able to just get under it and peel it back off with minimal damage. And then I re-glue the stick. I'm probably cursing myself out at this point. And then I reattach it. And it looks like I'm doing the same thing, but all I'm doing is uh, just moving it ever so slightly to the right. More to the edge of the page rather than the middle of the page. Reattached, I can now close my book with minimal damage to the film. Yay! <laughs> And that's that page done. The Witch's Road song, you open it up, you're met with the trapdoor to the Witch's Road. Love it! Best thing ever. And I think I'm just showing it off now. Oh no, I'm not. I've, I've, I know what I'm doing. I added more petals. That's what I did. Just on the background, I just stuck a few more of those petals. Kind of like it's overflowing out of the trapdoor and onto the page. It's like little traces of the road are coming out onto the page. It was a good idea, because I couldn't be bothered to draw like loads of blue leaves. That would have taken way too long. Would have been so tedious as well. But I think the blue petals just like, it's just a subtle hint, it's a nod to the show. Such a beautiful show as well, like ugh. Everything, the cinematography, the practical effects, the costume design, everything. Ugh. Love it. <laughs> and then I added a couple more just on the inside of the doors. The good thing about these petals is they're so easy to peel back off again, so... If I want to get rid of them, I can. But I don't think I do. I like them. Yeah, anyone who saw my Book of Shadows tour, I had a devotion page purely for the tower card. And I explained a little bit why that was the case. And so this is kind of acting like my tower card devotion page for this Book of Shadows. I think it's like a very strange, very creative way to just have that little reference to the tower card in my book. That was me showing it off again because I just can't help myself. And that's the main event done. I can close the book without damaging it, that's the main thing. <laughs> I just keep on messing with it. I can't stop touching, can't stop touching it. I'm like, must touch things that are interactive. So now I have this other page. So as a quick fix for this other blank page, I thought putting a picture of the Maiden Mother Crone 
the goddess Hecate was the perfect image to just have sat there on that page. So I used more of that purple paper, uh, uh, the underside of it, the shiny silvery side. I had this uh, random scrapbook paper which had like vintage style writing on it. Kind of reminded me of uh, the song lyrics even though it wasn't. I used my fancy scissors that create this kind of fancy border when you cut with them. Just made this rectangle shape and then I did the same again with this bit of paper. Just making sure everything fits. I struggled with this one, fiddly, very fiddly again. But, you know, I'm learning not to be perfect, so... <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I've had these scissors since I was literally a kid. <laughs> but they're so handy. So, yep, now I've got two bits of paper. And then my image of Hecate can go in the middle like that. Uh, the image of Hecate is from my uh, the Grimoire scrap paper book uh, that you've seen in my Halloween page book thing. I knew that that image would be useful for something at some point. But of course the goddess of witchcraft herself needed to be involved somehow. And they do mention her in the song lyrics, so perfect. So now we're just sticking it all down. And then once it's all down, I believe that's the end. Uh, oh no! It isn't the end. I've just I've just remembered. I did a tiny bit more. I think yeah. I wrote on the top and bottom of this. I wrote uh, "Maiden Mother Crone" at the top. Yeah, there we go. That's me doing it now. Just as a reference to the song lyrics. Just trying to tie the two pages together as best I can by using the same paper and then using those lyrics it kind of helps to blend the two pages together so they don't quite so you know they're not totally random they kind of complement each other Weirdly writing that I got wrong, had to <laughs> had to erase that. I could draw a perfect circle earlier, but nah. Could not write at that point. So yeah, my my good old black paint pen. Which is a very, very deep black. It stands out very well on everything. With my swirly whirly curly handwriting again. I always say Mother Maiden Crone, so I, I was confused when it was uh, Maiden Mother Crone. I don't know which way is the correct way to say it, but there you go. <laughs> I've just always said it Mother Maiden Crone instead of Maiden Mother Crone. And then of course the silver pen had to come out again and have its final little flourish. Because the silver pen makes everything better. Even more shiny for the shiny. And then at the bottom I think I just put Hecate. And I just wrote Hecate 
and then did some symbols, the triple moon symbol. You know, just in case um, that child that I mentioned from the future, that when I'm dead and gone and my book is in the attic and then a little child stumbles upon it in the future, at least they'll know who that is. <laughs> they can look it up. And yeah, Hecate's always like that mother maiden, <laughs> maiden mother crone, always depicted with the key as well. You see that one on the right with the key? So the fact that I had multiple keys in there as well. It's like I planned the whole thing. There you go, the triple moon symbols. I debated colouring in the symbols black, but I don't think I did. Nope, I didn't. There you go. Final result of that. And then that fits perfectly into that page there. So now all that's left to do is stick this down. I might come back to this page and add a little bit more. But I think it works on its own. It's a little bit bland for my liking. I like chaotic stuff. But I actually think this works just on its own. Secure that firmly in there. And it's done! <laughs> it's done! Completed! Yeah. So that is the end of that. And here's me showing off. Showing off all the stuff. Unlock thy hidden gate. Then there's the tower card in all its glory. The tower card upright. And then I loved being a witch. With a witch oracle card. There's your stone staircase leading down to the witch's road. You've got your timer and your key to get back out. And I think at this point I'm just doing thumbnail. I'm just trying to, you know get a good shot for the thumbnail. I'm like, where can I place everything so you can see everything all at once? How can I demonstrate? So yeah, everything's come together so well in the end. To say I didn't have much to go on when I started, <laughs> it ended up really well. And it holds that card in Perfectly. And then the depiction of Hecate on the other side. Trying to show off the shiny. Fold that back down. And that is it. That's the end. Follow me, my friend, to glory at the end. <laughs> I'm not a good singer, but I sing that song all the time now. There we have it. Woof. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. If you've seen the show, uh, let me know in the comments your favourite version of the song and what you think about my Book of Shadows inspired idea. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye now!